Hello, everybody. What's going on? Jeff Rieger, another episode of The Daily Ticket. This one for the 6th of March, 2024. How's everybody doing? I got to tell you, my wife believes I only shaved my head because of you. She heard or saw or, I don't know, listened to the podcast. I think it was on Monday where I said, I am a man of my word. I kept my promise. I told you I was going to shave my head, and I did. I shaved it, though, because of me, not you. You just helped me see the light. I shaved it because it needed to be done. It is amazing how people are reacting to the shaved head. Went for a little workout the other day. I think this was yesterday on Tuesday. Gorgeous day outside, right before it rained. And then afterwards, I'm sweaty. I'm walking my dog. Got the earbuds in, looking at my phone oblivious to real life. My neighbor drives by and I see him drive by. I give him a little wave and I go about my walk. He stops, throws the car in reverse, pulls down his window and says, you lose a fucking bet? I'm like, huh? He's like, you lose a bet? What's up with the shaved head? Like it was time. It was time. He's like, is this the new look? Like, Not liking it at all. I could just tell. Nobody says, like, dude, it looks great. Everybody's like, yeah, not bad. Or, yeah, it could be worse. Or, you could have a really weird shaped head. Nobody says, like, wow, good look. Like, wow, you look great. So, I've had to deal with that. But as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, where the light shines is where the trouble areas are. Meaning... The hair ain't ever going to come back. So I might as well leave it like this. At least I don't have to think about it. I get out of the shower. I dry my head and I move on with my day. That part is nice. The part that everybody's looking at me so strange, not nice. The other day I'm walking around in my neighborhood. I had three people look at me like, who's this guy? Never seen him before. Like, uh, should we call the police? So. Fun times. Last couple days. Still getting used to it. But anyway, let's move on with it because I know you got a busy day planned. It's hump day. I got a busy day planned as well. We got a big Red Wings game tonight. Wings in Colorado to take on the Avs. Try to end the two-game losing skid. There's going to be no Dylan Larkin. Got to win this game. At the time of this podcast, it is 2.06 on a Tuesday. So I don't know what happened with the other teams chasing the Red Wings, but if the Islanders happen to win, and you'll know by the time you watch or listen to this, then they're only going to be four points out of the postseason, meaning the Red Wings will be four points above the playoff cut line, meaning you got to win tonight. Also a huge game for Michigan State. Sparty's lost three in a row, two at home, one to Iowa, one to lowly Ohio State. Then they went on the road on Saturday night. I thought they played rather well, to tell you the truth. And they lost to Purdue. If they play like that every game, I think they're going to make a deep run in the postseason, the tournament. You might not believe me, but I'm telling you, if they play like they're capable of playing, and I saw a lot of that in West Lafayette at Mackey on Saturday night, Jason Benetti was on the call. You play like that, I think Michigan State could make a little run, surprise some people in March. I do. You can hit on that if you want. Also, Lions making a move. They're bringing back Emmanuel Mosley. The quarterback got him from San Francisco. He played all of two plays last season. What do you have, the ACL? Then he injured the other ACL. So they're bringing him back one-year deal. No big deal for depth, obviously. I think it's a good move by Brad Holmes and company. So I think I've caught you up. But now I want to hit on something that is rather perplexing to a whole lot of people. You know, people think they're experts in football. Everybody's got their own personal draft board, whether they actually draw one up or not. Everybody watches the combine. Everybody believes they know who's going to be a bust and who's going to really thrive in the NFL. And then you get the J.J. McCarthy, the Michigan quarterback, because it's so bizarre talking to people about J.J. Because he's the most polarizing prospect in NFL history, it seems like. So the latest thing that has really caught everybody's attention 
A CBS mock draft has J.J. McCarthy going third. Not the third quarterback, but he is the third quarterback too. But third overall to the Patriots. Caleb would go to the Bears, Jaden Daniels to the Commanders, and then J.J. McCarthy to the New England Patriots. Now, I understand this is the season of smoke screens. I also understand that all it takes is a writer with a hot take to get his stuff read. I do it too. I'm not against it. I throw stuff out there all the time hoping you're going to watch and listen. Some of it's a hot take and some of it is my true opinion. But Michigan State people, and this is weird that it's come down to this, but Michigan State people refuse to believe that J.J. is going to make a good pro. And Michigan people refuse to believe he's not going to make a good pro. I must say, before we go any further, as my dog continues to pant, can never leave me alone while I'm doing a podcast. It's not even her feeding time. I don't understand it. Can you hear her? Hey, you want to see her? Bouncy, can I just do the damn podcast, please? There she is. Say something else. Yeah. Do you think... Bark if you think J.J. McCarthy is going to make a good pro. Bark if I'm a great dad. Am I a great dog dad? Bark. Oh, yeah. Bark if you're enjoying your life. Oh. Oh, there we go. Bark if you got to go outside. All right, I'll be back. I got to let the dog out. All right, I'm back. Where was I before my dog so rudely interrupt me? Oh, yes. Before we get into JJ and how polarizing he is, I must point out, it's so weird the dynamic that we're living in where Michigan State fans and Notre Dame fans and Buckeye fans feel the need to trash JJ because all he did was win a national title, while Michigan fans feel the need to prop the guy up so much that at times it's nauseating to Michigan State and Notre Dame and Buckeye fans. Like, I don't really care what happens to a kid when he leaves my school. When he leaves Michigan, that's the school I root for. Whether he goes pro or not, I wish him the best. And the way we go, the only guy I really wanted to succeed because I really was a big fan was Jalen Rose. When he went to the Pacers in the NBA, I watched his career in the NBA. I rooted for Jalen. Other than that, I don't know. I really don't care if a guy from Michigan or Michigan State or really any school has success. I move on to the next class of the college team that I'm rooting for. But not in this instance. J.J. won a national title, so we know how it's going to be. Which makes this case of J.J. and where he's going to go in the draft even that much tougher to decipher. So let me just bring it to you. I mentioned that we now have CBS mock drafts saying that J.J. McCarthy is going to go third overall to the Patriots. CBS Sports' Ryan Wilson is the man that put together the draft as J.J. is the third overall pick ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr. and Drake May. The Ringers' Ben Salar echoed the sentiments. He said, quote, I heard significantly more interest and excitement for how high Michigan QB J.J. McCarthy might go relative how high LSU QB Jaden Daniels might go. Even Albert Breer got into the conversation. He wrote, quote, it sounds like the Patriots are exploring all of their options at quarterback. So it's fair to consider Baker Mayfield there too. I also would not dismiss the idea of McCarthy maybe in a trade-down scenario or even at number three. When it's one person, it's a hot take. When it's two people, still a hot take. Three people that people respect now saying they believe J.J. is going to be the third quarterback off the board and go to the Patriots at number three. Like That, to me, seems rather significant. And I think we all know what's great about J.J. He's got great leadership, infectious energy, a positive mindset, a guy that loves the game of football. Everybody loves him, too. He can be found breaking down film at all times. He's got a huge football IQ, tougher than advertised, can take a hit, can get back up when he's hit, and he's a flat-out winner. 36-2. and in high school, at IMG, won a natty, 27 at one at Michigan, won a national championship. 
And that's before you even get to his big arm. He can make all the throws, accurate, great zip on the ball. And he keeps plays alive with his legs as well. Great footwork, fast. What's not to like? Oh, yeah, I know what's not to like. His college career. You see, J.J. McCarthy, in 28 games at Michigan, 6,226 yards, 49 passing touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 632 rushing yards, and 10 rushing touchdowns. He didn't get worked all that much. Last season is really what's perplexing people. Really what is preventing people from believing J.J. is going to be a good pro. 2,991 yards, 22 touchdowns, four interceptions, a lot against bad teams, plus Michigan ran the ball 32 straight times against Penn State. The reason people don't think J.J. is going to be any good is simple. Michigan did not ask him to do all that much. Like, that is the only reason. J.J. passes every other test with flying colors. But the big test, what does your film look like in college? There's not a whole lot of it. Is that fair? If Michigan asked J.J. McCarthy to do more, would he have been able to? I tend to say yes. Wolverines also sent 18 dudes to the combine. Those guys are going to get drafted. Michigan had an elite running game. They had elite offensive line play. All the people that say, oh, J.J. can't be that good because he wasn't trusted in college. I mean, I kind of feel that's bullshit, to tell you the truth. Michigan's goal was to win the national title. It wasn't make J.J. McCarthy a top three pick. So to say, well, if they really thought J.J. was that good, they would have trusted him more. I think he would have had better stats. I think he would have succeeded. He knew the deal. Jim Harbaugh doesn't just want to win. He wants to win his way. They could run the football. That's what Jim's in love with. That's what they decided to do. Thus, J.J. did not get as much play as people wanted to see. So now, oh, well, if he was that good, he would have got more play in college. Do you think it's just possible that Michigan wanted to win? And they won the best way they knew how by running the football. J.J. played with a whole lot of good players. It wasn't just about the quarterback. It was about the team. But it's not like he didn't have good moments. Three touchdown passes in Columbus a couple years ago. Threw for almost 300 yards in that game. J.J. McCarthy was trusted to call protections and check in and out of plays, depending on what he saw from the defense. Also was a huge part of putting together a drive down seven to Alabama in the Rose Bowl late in the game. They went 75 yards and eight plays, 307 total off the clock. Scored a touchdown with a minute 34 remaining. He also threw three touchdowns in that game. And then I like this from that CBS mock that has J.J. going third overall. This is good, I think. J.J. McCarthy might be one of the most polarizing players in this class, and I'll admit it, I was skeptical that he was worthy of a first-round pick. It's not because he isn't talented. His arm strength and athleticism are impressive. But because he wasn't asked to do a lot in the Michigan offense, that's why. But go back and watch his third-down throws from 6 to 10 yards to go. He completed 73% of those attempts. Many of them NFL throws with five touchdowns and zero turnovers. We also talked to him at the Combine, and the charisma and leadership just oozes off him. And I get it. You might think that we got caught up in the moment. But I'll say this. Last year when we spoke to C.J. Stroud at the Combine, those very same qualities were blindly obvious in person, and it certainly did not hurt his cause during a historic rookie season. That was from CBS Sports. I like the part about the third down NFL throws. You could make the point that they trusted J.J. to pick up those third downs to keep drives going. The haters, the naysayers, the critics, the doubters will say, didn't play enough in college. Harbaugh didn't trust him enough. Ran the ball 32 straight times against Penn State. That's what they'll say. 
Oh, and by the way, they played a lot of bad teams too. People like myself will say, the dude's got every possible intangible knowing the mankind. He does everything well. We've already told you about them. I do believe if Michigan asked more of their quarterback that he would have been great. They didn't. Is that a knock on JJ or is that simply how Michigan ended up winning a national championship? It's really hard to think that Michigan did too much wrong unless you believe they cheated because the end goal was to win it all and they won it all. I want to know what you think. You think JJ is going to be a bust? Do you buy that JJ could go top three? He's going, everybody has him going at least top 10 now. Do you think he's going to be a good pro? Do you think it's a big deal he didn't play as much as people wanted to see him play at Michigan? If Michigan do more, you think he would have been one big fat failure? I want to know from you because this is polarizing. Now, there's two sides to every story. I was reading this Denver Post article because the Broncos could be in play for J.J. McCarthy. They might have to trade up to get him or maybe he falls to 12. But in that article, an anonymous coach, always love anonymous quotes, but an anonymous coach was cited as saying Jimmy, but an anonymous coach was cited saying J.J. is Jimmy Clausen. That's his comp. And as we know, Jimmy Clausen sure in the hell did not work out at the NFL level. I am so curious what you think. J.J. McCarthy. Is he going to get drafted high? Is he going to be a good pro? Let me know on the comment section. By the way, J.J. is going to have his pro day later on this month. He's going to get a chance to jump. He didn't do that at the Combine. At the Combine, he did miss some throws early on. And then he impressed everybody afterwards. Made some long throws, made some accurate throws, has good zip on his football. I think J.J. is going to be good. I do. I think he's going to be very good in the NFL. They're great. The only knock against the people that don't like him because he went to Michigan is that he didn't play enough in Michigan. That's the only knock. And apparently you can't take a guy that only threw for damn near 3,000 yards in the top three, five, seven, ten, first round. I guess. That's how people are thinking. What do you think? Let me know. In the meantime, enjoy your Wednesday. Let's get to some comments tomorrow. We've already gone too long. I had to take the dog out. I know you got a lot of things to do on this hump day. So I'll get your comments tomorrow. Plus, I have to give you a belief about Tom Izzo. And I wanted to wait for the Northwestern game to be over. That's tonight. So I'll do that tomorrow. It's been fun, guys. I'm going to take my bald head and I'm going to go now enjoy the rest of my day. Because people will come up to me and say, hey, not to be mean, but you look like shit. That's pretty much what people have been saying to me since I shaved my head. Anyway, we'll catch you tomorrow on a Thursday. Good night.